really sort of wanted to focus on and talk about uh, generative AI, uh, particularly LLMs, uh, and what we are seeing in practical sort of deployments. Um, just a bit of background um, in case you're sort of um, unfamiliar uh, with, with, with me and, and the business. Um, so I run a company called uh, Gradient Ascent, um, GA. Um, so we really help customers um, with their AI journey. So helping them figure out what they should do with it, um, help them actually do it, and, and, and help them sort of really become an AI company. So we really like to think ourselves as partners in uh, their AI journey, um, because as you know, it's never quite sort of straight straightforward. So been doing this for about seven years now, um, wide variety of projects, everything from you know nuclear power plants and hospitals to a lot of tech companies, financial services companies, and things like that. So our experience is kind of quite 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 varied, um, including sort of some things I'll talk about in terms of the work we've done. Uh, in the last few years with uh, generative AI in, in, in particular. But we really sort of like to take uh, a deliberate approach in terms of how we help our customers, both in terms of planning, building, and then helping them become sort of an AI company. I'm not here to talk about us, so, so I won't spend a lot of time talking about this, um, but instead maybe talk about a couple of projects uh, where Sort of generative AI played a big role, um, and and those two projects combined with a bunch of other places where it played maybe a slightly smaller role, um, and then we'll sort of get into the sort of the key takeaways. Um, and really, I welcome discussion. Feel free to sort of submit your questions on the chat, and um, Amir will sort of uh, uh, sort of coordinate uh, that that for us. So um, this is uh, work we did. Um, actually, about two and a half years ago now, so it's been a, it's been a while uh, for sort of a fairly large tech company. Um, obviously, we can't disclose names here, but you've probably seen their ads. Um, and really, sort of the 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 challenge that they came to us with: Hey, we realized that these types of technologies are coming, um, and we have a lot of competitors in the market that are smaller that are really thinking about um using ai to generate designs and things like that um and our process is still very sort of you know human driven human based and we're not trying to trying to sort of change that but we do want to give our customers who are consumers freelancers small businesses uh, uh, uh an option to generate design assets without having to use a designer so, so, so that was sort of a big part of, of the story. So um, if I can kind of provide um, some context about the type of business that I do, are you able to generate, for example, um, a logo for me or, or, or something else for me? So it's the type of things you obviously kind of see uh, now quite a bit, bit um, uh, com it, not quite common, but you see it all over the place. Um, whereas this is something that that they really wanted to start to do um, a couple of years ago. Um, frankly, this is before. Like I don't ever remember using the word generative AI at that time. Um, I think we used to call it, or they used to call it, algorithmic design. Um, but but obviously, sort of the, the 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 space has evolved. And so at the time, the availability of um, even if you kind of think about Dolly um, wasn't kind of quite there and Dolly and things like that weren't really appropriate. Um, but you know, early versions of GPT were available. Um, LLMs were starting to come together. Um, so we really used a, actually a wide variety of things. So we, we used um, things like Dolly, we used GPT-3, we used some early sort of open source LLMs. Um, and for lack of a better word, uh, sort of cobbled together um, a set of solutions that would help you generate the type of design assets that they they are they were they were looking to create. So the idea wasn't sort of here is one model that gets things done. Um, I believe at the end it was sort of about eight different things that that worked together to 
to generate the answer combined with you know a lot of rules and, and a whole bunch of other things um, to to make something like this work um, obviously their technology stack has evolved our role was to really sort of get them going uh, um, get help them get their 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 first version version out and so so um, really where we ended up using what we would now call generative AI in a project like this was obviously to help create text, but also to sort of label data um, and in some ways provide sort of creativity. So if the if the end user is saying, okay, I want sort of design assets that are like this, this, and this. Um, so so um, an example would be, hey, I'm a you know small retail business and I'm selling baked goods. Um, can you take that context and actually expand it um, to help the, the visual sort of design and create process. So, so they, they launched this in, in 2022, um, sort of in one country, and then sort of slowly they've, they've expanded it globally. Um, and, and we can't get into sort of the exact numbers of something like this, but the reason why I really wanted to highlight this example is is this was about sort of a new product, right? So this is not about a, here I have a process and I would like to automate it to, to reduce cost um, using LLMs or, or, or whatever. This was more about, can I create a new, new product and generate sort of a new, new revenue stream? Um, talking to them again recently, uh, they really kind of emphasized uh, this point. That they're like, this was the first Sort of AI-powered product that 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 we launched, um, and more than anything else, it really triggered um, in the company this recognition that hey, we need to do more of this. So so when they think about why this project was successful for them, um, more so than cool, we launched a new product that's generating revenue. Um, it was more about, hey, it, it built the foundation for it, opened our eyes to it, sort of, it, it acted as a catalyst for much greater investment into lots of other products that, that now they're building or enhancing um, or, or, or coming up with. So, so in some ways, it's that, it's that sort of you know, flipping a switch kind of idea um, was a big part of how, in hindsight, they see the impact of something like something like this. Um, whereas this this next sort of example I'll talk about is a is a is a very different business, a much smaller business. Um, they're sort of owned by a private equity company, um, and we worked with them for even longer. We've been working with them since 2019, so the relationship is very different. And when we really sort of started working with them. Um, it was a lot of focus on, hey, we are using these APIs. They do a bunch of NLP for us. Um, so so they, they record a lot of phone calls. Um, they transcribe them. Um, and then this API gives us insights on these calls, sort of sales-related insights. If you're familiar with Gong, um, it's kind of like Gong, not quite, um, but sort of really focused on, 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 a, on this, this specific vertical. And so they wanted um, our help to build out um, essentially a replacement for this API because they didn't want to send this data to the API. Um, they, they wanted to own the IP. They wanted to reduce those costs um, and, and, and so on. So I won't get into that because it's, it's sort of less relevant to our conversation today. You know, we did, we, we did all that. Um, but as we kind of started to work with them, again, what became clear um, that here is an industry or here is a company that's not very comfortable with AI. They're really used to having people listen to these calls and manually kind of saying, okay, this was a sales call versus this was a, a, a sort of a service or a finance related call, like which department for lack of a better word, um, or hey, our salespeople were not very friendly on this call. Um, they didn't gather the right information or they didn't share the right information. All of those things used to be done manually in sort of large call centers. Um, and, and as sort of 
their comfort level and their customer's comfort level with technology changed, um, you know, their, their deployment, both in terms of using this to automate, um, but also to create new products change, right? So, so really, uh, as I said, I've, I've provided 2021, 2022 here, um, just sort of uh, to, to have a full story, but really the part that we care about, you know, use of LLMs is focused, you know, starting late last year, this year, right? Where now they are very both comfortable, but comfortable with, but also um, almost sort of overestimating, right? Like what LLMs can can do, right? Or or they're hoping in some ways that, hey, you know what? Um, now I can use LLMs uh, not just to process these calls, I can use LLMs to even generate the labels, which we then use to actually create more task specific sort of traditional NLP type of models uh, because they work faster, they, they are cheaper. Um, they even use sort of Azure GPT to do more sort of sophisticated kind of um, work, uh, uh, for lack of a better word, sort of summarization and things like that, um, that, you know, open source uh, models haven't been as, as good at yet. Um, so, so sort of, you know, they've kind of gone from the maturity of, okay, this is cool, this is neat, let's try it, and could, could kind of cost us or, 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 or Sorry, save us some money and reduce our dependency on this third party, build some IP in-house to really become this company that is more and more trying to operate at the sort of the leading edge of, you know, you know, they're part of a bunch of Microsoft's beta programs. Right? They're, they're a large user of, of, of Azure sort of GPT calls and things like that. Um, so so um, the, the, the impact and the value uh, in their business, both from a um, new product development, like now they're picturing new products and new features that they couldn't do before from a cost saving perspective, right? The, the, I mean, they, they anticipate saving millions of dollars a year um, by using more um, LLMs or, or, or LLM sort of assisted uh, at sort of uh, NLP models. Um, and um, they're even kind of starting to use um, co-pilots and things like that to accelerate the product development. So, so um, they, they expect and anticipate sort of a massive um, ROI for them over the next, next few years. Um, and they're now sort of, they've become this like big, success story within the private equity fund and all the other portfolio companies um, to sort of say, okay, like let's go learn from them to start using technologies uh, like, like this. Um, I'm gonna take a quick pause here to see if there were any questions, Amir, you wanted to flag or anything like that. Uh, let's go to the end and we'll, we'll come back to the questions. Um, so, so um, with, with sort of just those two two examples, I, I, I wanted to kind of summarize what we have uh, uh, learned or are still learning. Um, and, and I think the big one is that almost everywhere uh, the, the impact is substantially positive. So it's not just that, okay, cool, it helped me a little bit. Um, it's, 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 uh, it can be sort of dramatic change, um, but it, does require um, that the companies spend um, and you, you cap spend meaning sort of capital spending um, to invest in building up these stacks, these capabilities, um, and this understanding. Of course, you know you can start using an API that doesn't require a lot of cap spend, um, but depending on the business that you are in, you may have to actually change a bunch of stuff to to make this work and. And, and, and I think that's, that's sort of relatively um, obvious when you think about it, but often people don't realize the change that that will sort of, sort of go in. And, and from sort of a, a, a very specific way, um, the ROI related to automation is it's quite substantial. So, so, so these are sort of some numbers from a from the, the call center example that I was talking about. And again, without going into specific uh, numbers, 
um, you're going from you know human costs that were quite quite substantial um, to using generative AI, um, which is um, uh, a, a lot less, right? Sometimes, um, I mean, we've seen anywhere from like 50% cheaper to, you know, 10x kind of cheaper uh, uh, impact. Um, but I also want to be clear, it's still far outstrips, right? Sort of the, the, the difference between using LLMs versus using sort of a task specific, you know, traditional NLP type of model is still substantial as well. Uh, whether you're thinking about training, uh, these were operating sort of inference costs, but 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 so it doesn't matter which part um, you look at. Um, smaller models and more specific models are are um, significantly easier to manage, train, and and, and are cheaper uh, uh, to operate. Um, with generative AI in particular, um, compared to say previous processes or even something like a task specific model, we do see often, uh, uh, at, at least in a couple of cases, I shouldn't say often, um, increase in sort of the costs around like data labeling and annotation. So, so if you kind of think about the, the call analysis example that I was talking about, um, they want to use Gen AI more, more LLMs to create new products. Um, and it doesn't require, in some ways, as much data as it required in the past. But the, but the type of things that now you're doing, in some ways, are more complicated. So, so the data labeling and annotation cost has sort of fallen, but not substantially. right? So, so their call centers, in some ways, have gone from listening to calls and actually giving answers um, and, 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 and serving customers, um, they are, they've kind of now pivoted to saying, OK, well, we'll you're still going to need to do data annotation. Let us, let us do that for you. Um, similarly, you know, concerns around edge cases and, and um, you know, hallucinated answers or anything like that um, are, are quite common and quite serious and and we're we're seeing that monitoring them paying attention to them working to them with customers is becoming sort of a, a bigger thing than it was in the past um, and and obviously sort of a related issue around QA like how to QA these things um, simpler models are a lot easier to QA um, with, with generative AI a lot of the answers that you get especially if you're asking things like summarization and stuff like that, um, you do need to spend a, spend, spend a lot more time and resources and money um, on, on, on QA. And, and it's at least so far harder to do uh, in an automated way, but, but, but we'll see where that, that, that goes. Um, and so, so sort of one other thing, again, a lot of this is contextual. But but you know LLMs are not robust in some cases, and so it requires you to increase investment in data quality to get the 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 model to behave the way that you want. Especially if you're sort of doing any fine tuning or or, or anything like that. Um, but sort of a, a big sort of benefit that we see. Um, and it's getting better. I, I, honestly, we kind of expected that this it, it, it was going to be a lot better than it already is. But but in practice, it doesn't seem to be the case, uh, primarily because of sort of data quality issues. Um, but using LLMs to label your data, which then you can use to sort of do a task specific uh, model. Um, so so that's that's one area that we still think can have uh, big improvements as we as we go forward. Um, and and when you're kind of thinking about the broader ROI around this, it's not just the 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 spend that you do on on building the systems and and operating them, but it is going to have a lot of upstream and downstream impact. So depends on um, when you think about this ROI, how you define um, the boundaries of, of, of your calculations um, potentially has an impact because um, even sort of training people to use these types of tools um, sometimes is required and, 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 and really actually quite critical to success, right? 
Um, the other thing that's clear, and 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 I think in some ways this this seems obvious, but but we are finding that in practice, this becomes a difficult decision to make. Is if you have you know high volume of consistent data, so um, if you're for example working with millions of phone calls um, and transcripts. Um, Using uh, a third-party API, you know, whether OpenAI or Azure or whoever else, there are lots out there now. Um, uh, it, it runs into a lot more expensive than than just hosting your own, since you can control it. Uh, it's a lot more predictable. Um, and again, we are finding that uh, there are still people are running into rate limits um, with third-party APIs. I'd, I'd be curious to hear from others if. Um, if they've they've seen this uh, as well, um, and like you know, if you if you are hosting your own, even if it's sort of a uh, assuming the performance is acceptable uh, to you from an accuracy perspective, um, it does then let you uh, do a lot more. Uh, um, it gives you a lot of flexibility to improve the model and make it to do exactly what you want it to do. Um, and potentially uh, reduce costs, improve performance, and 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 get it right. Obviously, this is changing too. Um, as you know, OpenAI just released a sort of a fine, uh, a pretty easy to use fine tuning capability. So so we'll see sort of how that 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 evolves. The other use case that that uh, we do see quite a bit, both in public and in our own work, is sort of knowledge-based type use cases. So you know, using LangChain to search through uh, an internal database or something something like that. Um, and again, the ROI there is positive. Um, but I'll sort of to talk about that in the context of, I think that the way people measure the impact of that, I've found to be quite inconsistent. So, Contextual, right? Sort of everybody thinks about it differently, um, uh, uh, and, and 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 subjective uh, because a lot of it is like, hey, um, I, I I can do things a lot faster, but it's very actually hard to hard to uh, uh, to get it right. Um, where there is some, if you are looking for specific numbers on this. Um, there are some public case studies. I, I believe Deloitte, Google, uh, a bunch of companies, even in their like public uh, the quarterly uh, uh, public calls and results have talked about um, support and call center related use cases. How much of an impact this has had, and and it, it's quite substantial, as you would imagine. Um, one one sort of ROI consideration we often like to kind of introduce and talk about is using LLMs um, from a from an AI or model development perspective. So even without using kind of a co-pilot, but just the fact that you have um, access to an LLM um, for NLP type of, of, of use cases, it can really reduce your sort of development effort, right? So lower cost um, and lower time, like faster time to market it. Um, and for for a, a, a world where you know speed is is really important, getting to market is is really important. Um, this is actually a, a a big benefit that doesn't exactly kind of show up in a in a cost sort of benefit analysis. Just, just something to be aware of. Um, obviously, this is a this is sort of a more tricky one because um, it, it, it's. It, it's got pros and cons, right? Because if if everyone can now go to market faster, right, um, then that increases competition, and really it serves to reduce differentiation, right? Because I can really get, um, I can really build either similar features or new features, um, or uh, without necessarily having scale, right? So so it sort of introduces this this question. Um, and, and we've been sort of really deliberate about this with our customers as well, right? Like, what's actually valuable here, right? And and we're not the only ones asking. This is a pretty popular question these days. Um, but one of the things that historically um, people assigned sort of a benefit to was, hey, if you're building this, this is going to become an IP, and and I would kind of question that, right? Like, 
what is the ROI on IP related investments at this point? So, so some benefit from a time to market perspective, but are you kind of losing from uh, an, 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 an IP perspective? And there are a few different ways of thinking about this, but, but at least um, within the context that uh, a company operates, uh, this may be a different answer and a, and a, and a good, good discussion. Um, so, I, 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 aside from just sort of ROI, but in context of ROI, um, like some other things that we've learned um, and and sort of worth worth talking about. Um, one is really, I mean, if I can kind of put a label to this, I would say it's timing, right? So, should I be making investments now, um, or should I wait a few months, right? Because um, you know, um, things are changing and things are changing very fast. So, so um, it may make sense to wait a few months um, because you are expecting a, a specific trend um, or trade-off to come, sort of become in your favor, right? Um, and and the question often there is is um, is what now good enough so it's a safe bet for me or am i really betting for these things to keep getting better in which case uh, maybe i wait or maybe i start experimenting with it um like regardless i think the 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 key factor here ends up being you know are you ready to kind of capitalize on this um the right way um because um even sort of aside from this there's also the possibility, right? So, so this is sort of an unknown kind of a situation um, that there could be sort of another leap like LLM that's just around the corner. We just don't know it. Um, and so how do you kind of establish that, yep, um, Gen AI or LLMs are the thing I'm going to bet on because their success, uh, regardless of whether something new comes, um, is still justified because the the benefits that they provide the trade-offs that they they offer um, are really quite substantial uh, i mean they are right so again these are contextual answers there is no sort of one way that everybody operates um but but the but the but the discussion is sort of uh, worth it before you um sort of say yeah okay let's go let's let's go bet on on this um and and i think it's a safe assumption that that um you'll have to change your architecture it's far too often it, this happened just yesterday somebody wants sort of a an architecture that's scalable and extensible and accounts for the fact that things would change um and that's that's obviously very 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 hard, and even though what you are betting on is flexibility, um, that has its own trade-offs as well because you're introducing complexity. So, so um, I think if you are assuming that you'll have to make changes down the road, um, you may be better. And, and we we believe in this assumption, right? That we think that things are going to keep changing, and and you 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 don't want to sort of bet too much um, unless it's it's so clear that this is the right thing to do. Um, so um, how do you maintain that flexibility without adding a lot of complexity? And we, we're really sort of fans of the, the, the idea of, of um, sort of right level of, of um, sort of uh, uh, modularization. Um, for where your LLMs uh, models or APIs are are, are, are sitting, right? Um, it also sort of uh, this is a more open-ended one, um, but you know, um, are you just thinking about ROI in an incremental manner, or are you sort of also recognizing that these technologies are introducing new threats and opportunities to your business? And again, an example being. Um, if if this increases the speed of development for everybody, then is that a threat to you because you are an incumbent business, um, or is that an opportunity for you because uh, um, 
um, you you know you can move a lot faster because you don't have um, other other challenges. Um, consistently, sort of the biggest risk consideration seems to be. Uh, I, I mean, you can label it in a variety of different ways, but but it boils down to reputation, right? Like, if I do this, will the quality be good? Am I going to generate a wrong answer for a customer? Um, this doesn't really change. There's nothing unique about this because these are LLMs or something like that. Obviously, details are a little bit different. Um, but but we really kind of like to ask the question of, um, is Gen AI appropriate here, right? And, and there's many factors here, but ultimately, um, um, or, and lately, because of the hype, um, there seems to be a lot of like, hey, we want to use Gen AI, right? Um, when we often kind of say, hey, there's there's sort of a lot of um, better bets for you to make here than to jump straight uh, to this. Um, what really helps, and we recommend um, that clients have really clarity of purpose. Um, why are you doing this, right? So is there a business case here? Is there a, is there a PR case here? Um, sort of what is the driving motivation here? Uh, understanding that really helps because it defines their openness to experimentation because these are experiments um, in, a, in, in, in most cases um, uh, versus something being, being straightforward. Um, being selective about you know, where you deploy this uh, managing expectations. Um, I think most people uh, um, understanding of AI is unlikely to be at the level of people who who are here uh, in this group today. Um, and frequent feedback, right? Sort of both in terms of just 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 knowing um, how the systems are performing uh, um, is critical to sort of mitigating these 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 risks. So, I mean, in general, again, like, I think beyond just sort of costs and revenues and, you know, um, I think a lot of other considerations play a big role in how you think about ROI uh, for these types of types of products. Um, and we find that the success is highly correlated with sort of growth mindset uh, within these organizations.